welcome back to Riftforge Studio. It's Sean today and I'm going to show you how to do a bit of a generic war-torn base. Uh, it's got a bit of a World War One aesthetic to it, so it'd be perfect for some Death Corps Krieg or any other models really as it's uh, brown and brown's quite a neutral colour and goes well with most other colours. I personally use it for my space walls as it complements their warm tones fairly well. So what you need is a mixture of sand and small stones. I got these from World War Scenics. Another good company is Geek Gaming Scenics. I'll leave a link to both of their websites down below. You want some slate, some scenic barbed wire and some PVA glue. And you're all set to go. So what you want to do is super glue the slate on as these are the heaviest thing. So they'll need a, a solid glue to keep them on. Next you'll want your scenic barbed wire. So it rolls up to about of a 3 to 1 ratio. So you want it 3 times longer how it will actually end up in length. You grab your paintbrush and you just wrap it around simply like I'm doing there. Creates a bit of a spring so you can spread it out a little bit to the desired length. And then just place it roughly where you're thinking about it and make sure it fits. Now, the super glue is dried. We want to cover the whole base in PVA glue. I tend to put it on quite thickly to hold some of those smaller stones and it will actually hold the barbed wire that you'll see shortly. And it also allows me to do a bit of a multi-layer of the sand to build it up to a bit of a thicker base. So when your base is covered with PVA glue, I add a little bit of extra just where the barbed wire is going to be as you just saw me doing there. And then just place it gently into position. It will be quite loose until the PVA glue has dried completely. So we need to be a bit careful putting the sand on now. So give your sand a little shake, mix it all up and pull it into the sand gently. Try not to move the barbed wire. This way is probably most likely to move it. So I moved on to actually picking up the sand and small stones and just sprinkling it on. As you can see I'm doing here. So when you've got it completely covered, just give it a little tap, work off the loose stones and sand. And just make sure you're happy with the coverage. And then just rub your finger around the rim of the base for any spillover so it's nice and neat around it. So the PVA is half dry here and it was just lacking a little bit of something for me so I just dabbed a couple of splodges of PVA glue. I'm just going to add a couple of skulls to add some interest to the base. So the sand will be slightly wet as you can see it there so you will be able to squidge that skull a little bit into it so it looks like it's sunken into the mud. While the PVA is still set and you can see it seeping through that sand, then this is where we just want to do that extra layer. This will ensure maximum coverage and it will add a few more of those bigger stones, as you can see here, as I'm just tapping off the extra. And this is the base built. So now we just need to leave it for a couple of hours to fully dry as you don't want to start painting on it as it will move that sand around. So to base coat the base, we're going to use Mechanica Standard Grey. I'm just going to paint it on here, but if your model's not glued or you want to base coat your model with Mechanica, Mechanica Standard Grey, just use the rattle can that GW have. I'll work around the whole base with this colour, just avoiding the barbed wires, I'd like to keep that silver, and I will use two coats to make sure there's good coverage. 
here you can see me just finishing that second layer and then we're just gonna let it fully dry and once it's dry we're gonna start picking out a select few rocks with this Skaven Blight Dinge Skaven Blight Dinge does have a bit of a brown uh, tone into the grey and we're just gonna pick out the small rocks and we're gonna pick out around half of them and at random as well so it'll look uh, quite natural and then when you've picked all these we're gonna go on to Bane Blade Brown and gonna pick the ones that we didn't paint Skaven Blight Dinge so just go around slowly picking out the ones of this colour now because this is brown over grey it will require two coats and you can see after one coat some of that grey is showing through so two thin coats does the trick as always so once this stage is done we're going to paint those schools now I use Vallejo model buff as a base and again thin it down and paint the schools with this and two thin coats again as it's a, uh, a light colour over the grey and one coat just won't do it. So that's all your base colours down, make sure they're all dry and then you want to use Agrax Earth Shade all over the base now. So I've already got some on my little palette here. Now I use me, uh, my scabby brush as it were as it tends to get ruined by the uh, coarseness of the sand. I don't really mince about putting a little bit on, I tend to chuck it on and then move it around. So once it's all covered in agrach, you want to just use a bit of Norn Oil and this will actually go on the barbed wire. So the agrach covers everything else that the Mechanica Standard Grey did and your Norn Oil for what it didn't. as I've put this all on quite thickly it's going to take a little while to dry so one to two hours and you'll be good to go on to the next stage so dry brushing I tend to use cheap makeup brushes and you want terminus stone citadel dry paint I uh, work it into my bristles and take most of the paint off as well and then just gently brush over all the rocks, avoiding the barbed wire again, and the schools. You want to avoid them. Now we've dry brushed all the stones, we want to hit the schools with some tyrant school. Now I've got a slightly smaller makeup brush as they're small schools. And this will be it for the schools. I don't tend to go too crazy on uh, schools on a base. Because it's a nice little dry brush over them. Now we're going to go on to the fun stage of using some weathering powders. We're going to be using Vallejo pigments. We've got Burnt Umber, Natural Sienna and Dark Yellow Ochre. We'll start with the Burnt Umber. Now if you haven't used Weathering Pigments before, they can make quite a mess if you're not too careful with them. So you just want to sprinkle it gently over the base. The first time I used Weathering Pigments, I made uh, quite a bit of a mess and got a bit of a tallin off from my wife. So once you've added a sufficient amount on, you just want to brush it into all the, uh, the stones and work around the base, making sure there's good coverage with this brown. So like I say, don't, don't brush too hard and whatever you do, don't blow it because there will, uh, pigment will go everywhere. Now I've noticed when using uh, powders, there's a bit of a dusty taste in the air. So I do tend to uh, wear a mask now as it can't be good for your, your, your lungs. So when you've got about this amount of coverage off the burnt umber, you want to move on to that natural sienna. 
and just sprinkled us over gently. As you see, I was uh, I hit my light there, so I was very lucky that didn't go all over the place. You don't want this layer of pigment to cover as much as the burnt umber, so we'll just put in quite a bit less on. And then instead of mixing it in, we're going to use a stippling action and just stab it into the base where it's laid, spreading it out slightly, and then just tapping off any excess. Now we're going to do exactly the same with the dark yellow ochre, but even less again, and trying to aim into the middle of where that natural sienna uh, was laid. So I've brushed the excess off my brush and then stippling in that dark yellow ochre again. Now once you've stippled all this in, just spread it out a little bit into the burnt umber and natural sienna so there's a bit of a, a natural gradation between the three colours. And do this until you're happy. It looks quite natural. But obviously, don't overdo it, otherwise it will just become all one colour if you mix it too much. And I just do a little dusting on top of the schools as well. Now to seal it, we're going to use Tamiya Thinner. And I'm just going to use a little pipette and just dab it on. So don't let it drop from a height as the splash will move the pigment about. So you just want to pull it so the pipette's pretty much touching the base and just letting it seep out. As you can see here, it does have a little bit of a capillary action and the thinner will actually spread out. So you can just put a drop on, see how far it goes and then put your next one. So once it's dry, I've just uh, put a black rim around the base. And that's it done. We hope you found this helpful and we'd love to see if you've used this and then the uh, baits in of your models. Just tag us on Instagram at Riffle Studio and we'll have a look. And that's enough from me today. I'll see you in the next one.